Hey everybody, and welcome to another Star Citizen video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the most amazing ships during Alien Week, the Asperia Prowler. Before we get started though, a huge thanks to all of my wonderful channel members and patrons who make videos like these possible. If you'd like to help, you can become a patron using the link down in the description below, or simply click the blue join button below the video right next to the red subscribe button to become a channel member right here on YouTube. No matter how you choose to support me, it goes a long way to helping me keep the lights on and keeping videos like these coming every single week. Thanks for your support. Let's go ahead and get started with this video. Alrighty folks, so as usual, we're going to go ahead and get started with an exterior tour looking at all the points of interest on the outside of the ship. Then we'll head inside for a nice detailed interior tour, and then we'll wrap it up with Urkel.Games in the browser to see how we can make this thing better. If you're brand new to my videos, that's usually how I do all of my ship tours, so welcome. And if you're coming back, hey, thanks for seeing us again this week. It's nice to see you. Let's go ahead and get started with the exterior tour. So one of the first things that we've got to talk about here while we're looking at the Prowler on the outside is its size because this thing is absolutely huge <laughs> giggity but it has to be because it is a drop ship and it is going to be carrying well over 10 people into battle so it needs to have the space and the flight characteristics in order to be able to handle well in difficult situations now you're not going to be able to see much context in first person so let's go ahead and switch over to third person to give you an idea this thing is absolutely huge and it actually handles like a much smaller ship which is really really nice Let's go ahead and start the tour then by looking at the very front of the ship and talking about the canopy or lack thereof. So what's really cool about Asperia is that they are not actually aliens themselves. They are a human organization that takes inspiration from alien designs into the spaceships that they then research and develop as well as manufacture. This is uh, the truth for the Prowler and its sister ship, the Talon, which are made to look like birds of prey. And you can see that by looking at the exterior, the very front of this looking like a beak and a head, the wings here. And then of course, we've even got some feathers at the end for good measure on both sides. So definitely a very imposing and striking look to the enemy when this thing is roaring over a hill and about to land with a bunch of dudes in there that are ready to take over an outpost. More on that in a little bit. Now, one of the things that you might notice on the very front here is that we don't really have any glass on the cockpit or the canopy, and there's good reason for that. Now, you may, might be wondering why that is. That is a design element that was introduced by Esperia, and it's actually a really, really cool and futuristic one, too. So the entire front end of this thing is made up of photosensitive light panels that take the light that they see here, and they broadcast that onto screens on the inside of this panel for pilots to see. So you're still able to see outside and you actually have a pretty good view. Again, we'll check this out when we do the interior tour, but it's honestly really, really cool because it does add an element of protection so that there is less likely chance of any kind of cockpit or canopy breach when you're out in space. So I think that's really, really cool. And uh, you can see that on the Talon as well. So you don't need to buy a more expensive ship in order to get the same tech. You can get it in the Talon, but the Talon, of course, unlike the drop ship that we have in front of us is going to be a light fighter. Right, so let's go ahead and walk around the port side of the ship here. We'll notice that we have what looks like some grav lab generators out here. Now, these are probably just thrusters, but if I'm wrong, do correct me. We do have the first ingress and egress point on the side here with a ladder that leads up into a very distinct red and black colorway. Again, we'll look into that in a little bit more detail once we're inside. Now, we're going to take a look at these in just a second. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at this wing and landing gear configuration because this is very, very interesting. The landing gear is relatively small, but it does come out of the front of the wing here. And it does tuck in in between the two pieces that you see here when not in use. You can bring these wings down with the K key without using the landing gear if you'd like to. And uh, I don't know why you'd want to do that because it just definitely uh, gives the cross section of this thing a beefier look. But you definitely can, and you can do the same exact thing on the Talon. Now, looking over here, we can see that we have a number of drop pods, and these are really, really cool. Unfortunately, I think this thing is kind of bugged out right now because I'm not able to close these manually with the inner thought system. As you can see, we're trying to close the door, and it doesn't close. So, CIG, that might be something that we might need to fix. And uh, that looks really, really cool, honestly. You guys might think that there is a little bit of a force field here, and there actually is. So the really cool thing about this and what makes this ship unique compared to other ships in Star Citizen 
is that you can actually shoot out of these portholes here and nobody can shoot inside because the force field stops any uh, outside fire from making its way into the actual ship. So you can arrive on scene and clear everything out on the ground without ever risking the lives of your compatriots. And that way you can uh, make sure that when you disembark the ship, you are doing so safely and able to continue on your mission. That's honestly really, really cool. Now we're moving to the rear of the ship here, the aft giggity, and we can see that we have a nice big butt. We have some vertical fins and some horizontal fins as well, which add to making this thing a lot more uh, maneuverable than I would have expected, to be honest. Especially in atmosphere, this thing does fly pretty decently for its size. Now we have a nice big ramp in the back here. This is going to lead inside, which again, we'll have a look at in just a little bit. But first, we're going to go ahead and walk around the starboard side of the ship where we can see that symmetry is definitely in the books for Asperia. As we can see that we have those four portholes here to shoot out of and each of them having a corresponding seat again. We'll have a look at that in just a little bit. Now, looking over on the other side here, we can see that we have some more symmetry yet with more feathers and landing gear. And then, of course, we do have a landing gear in the back there as well with the two little feet. So a very interesting way to land this thing. It actually looks really cool. And again, just looks absolutely menacing when you're looking at it from the front. So let's go ahead and head inside and do an interior tour for you before the sun goes down. And then hopefully we'll uh, jump into a little bit of Urkel Dot Games and see how we can make this thing even more badass than it already is. We'll see you there. All right, so heading inside here. Now, this is going to be the first moment that you realize that this is unlike any other ship that you have ever set foot inside. There's a very distinct black and red colorway here. Everything is extremely edgy and just really futuristic looking. And the lighting is awesome. Now, we do also have these force fields. These are the ones I was talking about. We've got one on the back here, as you can see here. So, unfortunately, I don't have a friend here to demonstrate for me. But if I was being shot from outside, this force field would be uh, absorbing that. It would not be allowing any shots to go through, as would be the case if I was standing here. And uh, none of this would go through. Now, of course, you would be protected by the shield of the ship itself. But there are individual force fields here. Now, again, uh, this does look a little clear. So I'm not sure if it was changed recently. They used to be very much more red, as you can see in the back here. It was very similar color to this. So you can see that you're able to walk through this. But that, of course, there is something there to prevent any kind of fire to come inside the ship. So that makes the interior environment for all of the people hanging out here waiting to deploy a very safe one, which is very interesting. One of the other things I wanted to mention is that I noticed that there was a lot of openings up here. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, how is this going to work when we're in space? Well, if we think about it this way, there's force fields. I mean, we live in the age of force fields now, right? So if the force field is able to keep the vacuum of space outside and the pressurization of the ship inside, then you know what? It doesn't matter. And it actually adds to a really beautiful aesthetic, especially when you've got some sun shining out from the top of the ship into the inside, creating some nice god rays. It just looks really beautiful. Now, as you can probably tell already that the seats are not going to really be seats. They are going to be standing seats, but that allows for a lot more room in an area as tight as this. Now, we can see that's quite long, but it's a bit narrow. Insert dirty comments down below. But it does accommodate quite a few people. So let's go ahead and count and see how many we have. So we have two on this side. We have two on that side. So that's going to be four. There's going to be two facing back to back here. So that's six, eight, ten, twelve. And then we've got some more space up here. We've got 13, 14, 15, and 16. Plus the co-pilot and the pilot above. I'll show you where that is. That is going to be a total of 18 people on this ship, which is absolutely absurd. Now, the way that you get into these uh, little seats here, and as you can see, they don't really have any butt rests, so you're really going to be just stuck against the back of it. But I like to think it's kind of like one of those Gravitrons at the fair where things are moving so quick that you're just kind of stuck to it. I'm kind of thinking that they might have a, a similar feature in here at some point where they have a gravity generator that just holds your body to the seats nice and safely and securely. But we'll see about that in the future. Now, um, I can see that my character is holding the restraint up here. I'm not sure if this is intended because this does look like a kind of a roller coaster uh, over the shoulder type of restraint. And I do remember in previous patches this coming down. So do let me know in the comments down below if you remember the same thing. But I do believe this might be another bug that we might need to work out. So CIG, if you're watching, first of all, thanks for watching my video. I'm honored. But uh, also, let's go ahead and get that fixed if possible. Uh, and maybe if you guys can drop a issue council link down below, 
so so we can all upvote it for you but yeah really cool we got the portholes here again unfortunately we're not able to close these so this might be another bug for us to look at we're usually able to do this with the inner thought system but not uh at the moment alas we'll be moving on to the next part we see that we have another ingress egress point out here we can of course use the ladder to get out i'm actually not sure if we can just jump out i don't think that we can okay won't let us won't let us jump out so that's good it'd be uh, it'd be nice if it was like a more uh more of an open opening a little bit bigger there so that we can actually jump out but that's cool we can always run out the back now one of the things that i'm a little perplexed about is that we see that we have some rifle stations here we have uh well just one really for four rifles but we've got like 16 people on board so i mean i'm hoping that you know they're they're going to be able to uh hold everything actually in fact this this looks like it could be rifle storage here as well so you know what that that actually works that okay never mind never mind everything that i just said just completely scratch it we've got four uh rifle uh holders here for these four people here so we've got one two three four that is going to be where you put your rifles or your weapons over here and then here we've got one two three four five it looks like if if these are what i think they are that's five what else we have we have six one at the end there hold on one two three four five six yeah so we got six on either side so that makes 12 so if we go two four six eight uh ten and 12 perfect so there you go so we've got just enough gun holders for everybody on the ship which is good uh i actually didn't even really notice these until just later on so that's pretty cool and then we do also have a ladder on the inside now probably wouldn't notice here right away but this is actually the co-pilot seat and the pilot seat is actually up here and this is a very weird ladder it looks kind of super alien like but it's not weird because of that it's weird because usually you'd have to climb a ladder with the f and left mouse button but in this case you literally just walk up to it and you climb it there we go all right and uh then we've got the pilot seat up here so you've got a much better view out this way and then of course down below we also have the co-pilot seat now when you have both people in there you should be able to fly the ship from both ends uh, but uh, you can have a two crew on this ship and one of them is going to be using the size three turrets on the very top. So I hope you enjoyed the interior tour. We're now going to jump in to uh, Urkel Dot Games, take a look at some of the weapons and some of the different features and components on this ship. Because honestly, it's a very, very unique ship. And uh, if it's still available right now, uh, then I would recommend you to pick it up. And if you're watching this video later on uh, and you want one, DM me because I've got some in buyback and I can uh, get an LTI uh, or 120 month insurance for you. So just let me know on uh, Discord and we'll talk about it there. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and jump into Urkel.Games and see how we can make this thing even better. Alrighty, folks, so here we are on Urkel.Games. Uh, if you're not familiar with this website, it's one that allows you to uh, sort of try to configure your ships in different ways. Now, this is not in any way tied to Star Citizen in that you can't make changes here and expect to see them in the game. This is just a tool. It's just a calculator to see how things would work, how much power or shields you would have, how much damage you would have based on different components that you put on your ship. So just keep that in mind. And uh, one of the other things, of course, to keep in mind is these are going to be my suggestions overall just general suggestions for what to go for these suggestions are actually based on my own playstyle, so they might be different from yours so it might be worthwhile to play around a little bit in here and see what works for you but of course if you have any of your own feel free to drop those down in the comments below so let's go ahead and get started so the very first thing we're looking at is we've got a pair of size 5 gimbals now we're going to want to get rid of these um, now, I know that we're in a larger ship, but uh, to be honest, I'd like to have size 5 weapons instead of size 4 weapons, and the deadbolts are very short range anyway. We're not going to be dogfighting in this thing, so we're going to change these things out. Now, my preferred uh, is going to be the Omni Sky. So, as you can see, there, we're going to go ahead and choose the Omni Sky. And here, we're going to choose the Omni Sky again. There we go. And uh, one thing to note is, at least in my experience, in the current patch, that... Uh, the size 5 laser cannons definitely scale a lot better in damage at size 5 and above compared to repeaters. Now, you can put Galdarines in here. If you like Galdarines, you can do that, of course. Hey, it's your ship. Do what you want. But I'm going to put Omni Skies because they do fire slower, but they do a lot more damage and they have pretty decent range as well. 
Now for the remote turret, this is the one that you're going to be uh, piloting when you're in the secondary seat inside the prowler. And you can go ahead and change these as well. Now these are light strikes. They're not bad. I believe these are the ones that come on the guns on the retaliator and they're okay. Um, but I actually prefer my tried and true CF337 laser repeater. So I'm going to go ahead and put a pair of that on there. And then as you can see, our DPS is lovely. Now scrolling down. Uh, we're going to be going straight down to shields as uh, we don't have any missiles on board for this particular vessel. So for this, uh, we get a pair of Sucron shields and honestly, I would leave them. Uh, the reason why I would leave them is they uh, they have been nerfed in previous patches, but they are still pretty good at absorbing um, any kind of ballistic fire. Uh, and it'll be absorbing a lot more than pretty much any other shield out there. And these are unique shields to Esperia ships. So you just keep that in mind. I, I I don't know if you can take these off anymore and put them on other ships. I'm not sure if that's something they patched. But what I can tell you is these are very unique. You can only get them on the Prowler, on the Talon, and so on. And so uh, when you have two of these, certainly use them. And they are the larger size of the two. There's the Sucuron 1s and Sucuron 2s. Uh, and because you have a pair of 2s on here, these are very good. I would not touch these at all. You can change these uh, if you want a little bit, maybe slightly higher shield pool, but you're not going to be going up against a lot of ballistic fire. But to be honest, these are absolutely great. Uh, I would just uh, hang on to them. That's just my two cents. Now, moving on, we're going to be looking at the uh, Eclipse, not the ship, but we're looking at the, uh, the power plant here. Um, it's kind of interesting that they gave us a stealth power plant, and this one's not particularly bad. But if we look here very carefully uh, we are going to see that uh, we're going to get some uh, some better power here actually well let me see what, where are we at we got the eclipse at uh, 53 yeah so we're definitely going to want to upgrade this and uh what do we have here we've got the diligence i mean the um the gano is good the, the problem with this one is it's very very expensive so uh if you want to get the Ganoa, the Ganoa is great i mean uh ridiculous more than twice the power um, that you were getting from the other one uh, at 13750 instead of, what is it, 5750 something like that. Um, but, I mean, this thing is going to cost you an arm, a leg, a kidney, and possibly either your three front teeth or uh, the leg of your firstborn. So you definitely want to uh, save a little bit of money on that. And if you want to do that, the JS is fine. Uh, 10625 is still better than what you were getting uh, at the factory. So that is what I would go for. But again, uh, whatever creams your Twinkie, uh, you're, you're good to go there. So going to go ahead and move on to the coolers now. Uh, the coolers, I would not say they are as important to upgrade. Uh, and in fact, if you wanted to upgrade any of this stuff, I would upgrade the quantum drive first. I would then upgrade the shields, then the power plant, and then the coolers in that order. But if you do want the coolers to be a little bit better, uh, I do prefer the snow packs because they are the industrial and they do uh, some of the most cooling here. We can see that we have quite a bit. Uh, actually, not too much lower here on the snowfall. So that could be a little cheaper. You could also go with avalanche. Uh, there's the avalanche there. A little bit less, but still very good. And these these would be a good economical option. For me, I'm actually going to go with the snow packs because they are the best of the best. Um, and that's just because I've got a little bit of money to spend. But if you want to save money, definitely don't go with the snow pack route. It's not worth it. Um, you know, even the stock one is going to be absolutely fine uh, until we start to see serious changes to ship components. So this is just me. Uh, but you can go ahead and get an avalanche if you really want to upgrade. If you want the best of the best, go with the snow pack. And if you just want to leave it where it is, you'll actually be fine there too. Okay. So moving on to the quantum drive, we get the Nova. Uh, the Nova's not bad, but it's not great. As you can see, 142K uh, is our speed on this. And when we compare that to one of the better ones here, uh, yeah, there's going to be a big difference. Um, this is going to be a size two, so we definitely have a few options here. And as we scroll down here, we can see that there's uh, quite a number. So what you need to ask yourself is, you know, what do I want to do? Do I want to go long distances and save on fuel? And if that's the case, you definitely want to cross field. Crossfield is going to be uh, very affordable to buy. It's available in numerous places, and it's also very economical. Certainly not the fastest, um, but it definitely does the job. Now, of course, if you want to go a little bit quicker than that, and you don't mind spending money on fuel, because we all know how much more expensive fuel is these days, that includes quantum fuel, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not. XL1 is going to be the one to go. And as you can see, there are the, uh, definitely going to be one of the fastest speeds there. I don't know if the fastest on, uh, on paper when it comes to... Uh, you know, looking at the chart here, but the XL1, 
uh, overall with its speed, its acceleration, and its fuel economy is pretty damn good. Uh, the fuel economy is, you know, it's not the best when you compare it to others, but given how much speed you're getting on this thing, it's very, very well worth it. And honestly, it's my go-to for anything that requires a size two quantum drive. So that is going to be the build for me. Now, of course, down here, uh, there are some skins that is going to be up to user preference. But I'm going to go ahead and leave a link for this down below as well as the clean one. And uh, hopefully you guys can share some of your builds uh, down below or even in our Discord if you'd like. We've got a uh, channel just for that. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to help me out by dropping a like. Making sure to become a subscriber with notifications turned on so you never miss my weekly uploads. Come on over, say hello on Discord. We have a wonderful community there. And hey, if you want to go above and beyond and really help me out directly, you can do so by becoming a channel member. You just click the blue join button down beside that red subscribe button or click the link in the description at the very top. That'll take you to my Patreon page. And we've got some awesome goodies for you there. Thank you so much. No matter how you choose to support me, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my video and I hope to see you in the next one.